Hello everyone, I'm Zina Dilladai, and today we're going to be doing another laser video. Here is the result of a 100 milliwatt green laser that's been rebuilt to a 1 watt argon lookalike, and I'm going to show you how I built it in this video. And here's the laser. As you can see, it's a pretty simple laser, and if I turn off the light, the output's pretty okay for a 100 milliwatt laser. Although the problem is, is when it gets warm, it starts to dim out which is a common problem with these cheap DPFS lasers. I'll show you more about that at the end of the video. Here you can see one of the problems. I said the power supply for the laser has become loose out of the case. All of the new drivers I'm going to put in are going to be much more secure and we're going to have no problem with that. I'll be putting in two lasers. First thing is 532 nanometer green, which I believe was manufactured by CNI. I pulled this out of the moving head laser projector. I've had to make the power wire shorter from the laser head to the driver, but it turned out really well. It's pretty big, but I'll find a place for it, no problem. The other laser is a direct diode laser, which is 445 nanometers. I believe it's one that uses an M140 diode and is pretty common. The diodes are only $17 on eBay if you put them up. Finding a sturdy solution was a fun problem. This aluminum plate here will serve as a solution. A couple of things need to be done. First, I'll take this plate, and I'll be mounting it to the bottom of that. Then, the red control board, which is right here, will have to be moved back in order to make room for this plate. I'll be unplugging one galbo after galbo and one galbo at the end to make sure that I match them up later on. Then I'll start moving this bracket, and using extreme caution, remove the galbos out as they are extremely delicate devices. This will leave us with the metal plate that we can work on later mounting the other piece of aluminum. With our two lasers side by side on the plate, you can see that they have enough room to freely fit in. No waste of space, perfect fit. Very happy with how this turned out. With both pieces lined up in the vise, I can now start to drill that pilot hole. Carefully checking to make sure the two millimeter drill bit fits in and it looks like it'll work very well. So on to drill. Now, in the place where we put that 2mm hole, we'll be making a bigger hole with a 4mm drill bit. After this is done, we can simply secure both plates together using one screw, which will make doing the other hole extremely easy. As you can see, they line up perfectly, so we'll go ahead and put these two together with the screw. After securing this piece in place, we'll locate the other threaded holes and match them up. Here is the one we did here. Here and here are the last ones to do. So back to the 2mm drill bit and drill them out. After the drilling is done, then you loosen up the screw and you remove the bracket that's on the top out of the way so the larger holes using the 4mm drill bit can be done. After this step, you can go ahead and line those pieces of metal together and see how well those screw holes line up. And as you can see, they should line up pretty perfectly. Now on to the next step of countersinking. To countersink, I'll be using this 6mm and then an 8mm drill bit. This will allow the screws to fit in underneath the surface of the aluminum plate. The next step is to remove this red driver board, which will have to be set back further in order to make room for a new optical table. So a couple of screws need to be removed and out it comes. They say that there's a trick for everything, so what I'm using is a small flat head screwdriver to scrape away the paint in the bottom of the case. A few things need to happen. First, holes for this plate here, and then to make sure that the height is correct for the green laser. So I'll be taking the original laser and comparing the height off the optical table to where they would line up, and as you can see, they line up almost perfectly, which will make this really easy. Now I'll be marking on the optical table where I'll need to place some more holes so I can bolt the green laser down, and then onto the U bracket, which I'll bend later, to mount the blue laser down. I'm also going to remove the control board and then mark out where they need to be plugged in using a sharpie to keep track of different wire locations. And we're all set to do our drilling. So we've got one hole right here in the bottom and another hole on the top. On the bottom side of the laser, four more holes to drill for the board when it's moved back. After marking all the areas, we'll need to drill out holes to mount the green and blue laser. I'll be using a drill bit 
is slightly larger than the threads on the screw to ensure that they go in the holes effortlessly. I'll be using nylon lock nuts to make sure that they cannot become loose. This ensures stable alignment. On the bottom of the laser, there are two more additional holes that need to be drilled for the optical table. After the drilling, I can now check the UFOs to see if it works in watching the blue laser and making sure that the optical table fits in. The green laser will be mounted by these two holes in the bottom. I have put extension posts on the bottom of the driver. Using two screws, I'll be able to secure the green laser driver to the bottom of the laser case. Once this is done, I can start the wiring. Live, neutral, and ground from the AC will have to be connected to the input of the laser power's AC driver here. First, I have to remove all the old wire and heat shrink. After all the old wires are removed, I have to make sure to solder live, neutral, and ground to their proper locations on both the laser driver and the galvo driver, ensuring that each one of them have a good connection. So let's pick up the pace. Using a heat gun makes finishing this a breeze as it secures the heat shrink in place and makes warm wires that are easy to tuck into place before we place the cover back on. I have secured the green laser down using four screws from the bottom and four nylon lock nuts on the top. I'll be using calipers to make sure that the blue laser is at the exact same height as the green laser. This will make sure that both beams are lined up on the same vertical axes. I have taken and secured the blue laser driver down using these small L brackets that I made out of pieces of metal. These two screws hold it onto the outside of the case and the board is held down with two more screws. There are two sets of wires, one for power and one for TTL modulation. I'll be replacing the wires for power with a set of blue and red wires, so that way I don't get them confused with the TTL modulation. While looking at the blue laser driver, I noticed that there is a full perspective fiber followed by an electrolytic capacitor. This tells me that the wires can go either way on the power supply and that it can go up to 24 volts. I'll be using the positive side of the double driver, which is a negative positive power supply, positive 15 and negative 15, or 30 volts between the two sides. I'll be connecting the red wire up to the positive, and I'll be connecting the blue wire up to the ground, which is shared between the positive and negative rails. Once both lasers and drivers are installed, the optical table can now be set up. I'll be plugging in both Galvo drivers to the locations of where I have plugged them before. At this point, we can now plug in the laser and test the blue laser output. As you can see, it's doing quite well. I'll be making a mirror to reflect the green laser to the Galvos. I found a first surface mirror that I harvested from my laser printer. This is part of the scanning assembly. After applying tape and the mirror, I can glue it on using super glue to these small piece of brackets which I have bent into a 90 degree angle. Using accelerator will help the process go quicker. After taking the tape off, we can inspect to see how well the mirror is. It looks pretty clean, so I'll screw this down in its location and line it up with the green laser. And as you can see, the reflection off the mirror to the elbow is nearly perfect. 
This laser only has a single PPL output, so I'll be soldering the two positive PPL inputs and the two negative PPL inputs of each laser for the corresponding positive and negative PPL outputs on the side of the lens. And now we can test to see if both lasers are modulating correctly, which they are. This steel plate from the computer will serve as our micro bone. Using a rotary tool and cutting disc, I will cut out the piece of metal that I'll be using as the die for mount itself. And with a file, I can make sure that all the edges are smooth, free of all debris. Then I'll bend it into a 90 degree angle like I did with the first surface mirror that I used in the green laser. Once this is complete, I'm going to cut out a small cutaway in the metal, which will allow laser light to travel in between the two posts that I'll be doing the die groups. Now for the die curl, which is a reflect blue and pass green. I'll be taping the die curl on the side that has the AR coating, and then with super glue, mounting the die curl to the piece of steel. After the die curl is mounted and in place, I'll be using the same accelerator to set the super glue in place. If you work with super glue a lot and you want better results, I highly recommend using a super glue accelerator as I have found it the most useful. After removing the tape, I can use two laser pointers to test out the effectiveness of the die curl. After screwing down our die curl and mount the optical table, we can now do a quick alignment and see how it works. As you can see, the alignment is extremely good. Since everything looks good, we can turn off the light, put on the fog machine, and test out the laser. And as you can see, the end results are pretty amazing. As this laser with its green and blue mix is quite dazzling and unique. This was a one-of-a-kind rebuild for a friend, and I hope he enjoys it. Now let's take a look at the original laser head. So after some time, you can see it got quite dim. I'm going to pull the laser module out of the original housing. As you can see, there's a fan and heat sink. Between the laser module and heat sink, there's a TEC, or Peltier, which is a thermoelectric junction that keeps the laser diode cool. The fan also helps. Compared to my 50 milliwatt 505 nanometer laser, you can see this 532 DPSS laser is quite dim, and that is because of the separation of optical crystals and material breakdown. I'll be removing the front piece, which has the collimating lens in the front, and then this little brass block, which has the expansion lens. On the left is the expansion lens, the center, the side where the green laser light comes out of, and on the right, the side where the IR pump light goes in. On the bottom, for reference, are the parts from the DPSS green laser pointer. Here's a closer view. If you look closely, you can kind of see the little crystal in the inside of the lock. When this crystal is excited with 808 nanometer laser light, it will start delays. There are two crystals, neodymium doped yttrium orthiopenandate and potassium titanophosphate. Under a full spectrum camera, here's how it looks. All that's left is the 808 nanometer laser light, which is extremely dangerous, and once collimated, like it has been on this laser assembly, can burn into wood very easily. Liking this video means motivating me to get more laser videos up, and subscribing means that you'll see them when they come out. I have many other laser colors and other laser knowledge to share with you. Stay tuned.